glad to be here. It's exciting to uh, come to a facility where people are excited to train like this and to get better. Um, I'm 37 now and I started lifting when I was about 12 years old, maybe even a little bit younger. And um, my two older brothers uh, were, were into powerlifting at the time. But powerlifting was really obscure. Like we, you know, my brother's right here, by the way, the director of Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen, for Christ's sakes. The least he can do. The guy nearly died three times making that movie. Anyway, uh, you know, he, he's the one who showed me a lot of the ropes with powerlifting, pretty much taught me everything I know today. Um, but powerlifting was really obscure and nobody was doing it. And nobody was, you didn't have people talking about uh, doing deadlifts and trying to in, increase their bench press and, and having so many females involved in the sport as well. We didn't have this uh, surge of CrossFitters and, and uh, people that are just not even necessarily uh, doing powerlifting competitions, but they're still using powerlifting as a tool to make themselves better. And something I want to share with you guys today before we get started is, um, you know, I, I'm just, uh, some people uh, you know, try to make me out to be something bigger than, than I am. And, and that's cool and it makes me feel good and that kind of thing. And some of you guys are really excited to meet me, but um, I, I'm, as, I'm as ordinary and as fucking similar as you guys are. Um, there's nothing special about my genetics. Uh, although the first time I did do a bench press, I was a little bit stronger than my friends. Um, and I kind of hung on to that and I, I rode that to where I did. Um, but we are all very similar in here. A lot of us have similar goals. The goal is to get stronger. But the goal isn't to get stronger and bigger externally only. It has to be internal as well. You have to have the drive and determination to make yourself a better person each and every day if you really want to take this thing as far as you can. If you just want to do like a 600 pound deadlift and you're happy with that and that makes you excited, then that's cool. But I hope to God that you're getting a lot more out of it than just that. I hope you're enjoying the journey and I hope you're understanding uh, what it means to actually get better, how much hard work goes into that. Um, some guys that you see lift these big weights, uh, some of the guys that are lifting some of these top end weights, I sometimes question like, what else are these guys doing? <laughs> you guys ever think that way? You're like, what else does this motherfucker do? Does this guy have any other hobbies? Does he have any other interests? Does he even have a family? Does he live in a motherfucking cave? It's like, what? What are some of these guys? And, and hopefully we can become at least a little bit more well-rounded than just the weights that we lift because it's not just about the pounds that we lift. You can come, people come in here and they look at the weights, they get, tim they get intimidated by some of the weights some of the big guys are lifting. But that's a byproduct of these guys lifting for several years. It's also a byproduct of them being big. Uh, it's a byproduct of a body of work for a lot of people. They've just been doing it for a long time. And that's the case with me. I've been doing it for a very long time. And on the other side of that is me being a father, me being a business owner, me being a husband, and me doing all, these, all this other stuff that uh, kind of completes me, basically. It's not just about the, the weights. It's not just about doing something underneath a fucking barbell. You should want to do something in your life other than just do something under a barbell. And hopefully, the things that you do under a barbell can give you the confidence to, to do what I'm doing right here, to come up and do a seminar, get in front of people, and talk in front of people, and uh, share with people your strengths and your weaknesses. I, I was told at one point that I was on a fourth grade reading level. That would have been cool if I was in fourth grade. That would have been cool if I was in fifth grade. But I was in fucking tenth grade. And uh, you guys know what big bad Mark Bell said to the guidance counselor? who uh, you know, was trying to figure out why I had so much trouble reading? That right there, nothing. Because I was afraid and scared of fucking everything at that point in my life. I didn't have, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now. I didn't have any confidence in me whatsoever. I was already lifting at that point, thank God. Uh, but lifting has saved my life. It has changed my life forever. I'm fucking rich because of it. Not to, not to, not to brag about it, but that's the motherfucking truth. I was talking to my son last night. My son started talking to me. Uh, he keeps asking me, my son's 10 years old, he keeps asking me these questions about lifting. And he wants to know more and more. And he's Googling me, his friends are Googling me, and they're trying to figure shit out and they're confused. They see the selfies, they don't know what's going on. Like, is my dad gay? Why does he have so many, why does he have 88,000 male followers? What the fuck's going on here? 
So he doesn't know what's going on, but he keeps asking me these questions and I'm telling him, I'm like, yeah, over the years I've built confidence. And he goes, yeah, over the years you've built confidence and now we live in a mansion. And that's the truth of it. That, that's what happened. That's the story. The story is a story that started under the iron with a stupid kid who didn't have the ability to fucking read very well, was able to overcome a lot of things. And it's not because I'm better than anybody. It's just because I put in the work. And it's about you guys putting in your work and not reading what other people are fucking putting up on Facebook and the tweets people are putting out and the mean and vicious bullshit that goes on in powerlifting sometimes, which can just absolutely be ridiculous. Um, you have to focus in on your work, the work that you need to do to make yourself better. Not the work that you know, Stan Efferding did to make himself great. Not the work that this guy did or that guy did to make themselves great. It's important that you rub elbows with some of the best people. It's important that you learn from people that have done it already. But the truth is, and you're going to say, why the fuck am I even here now? But the truth is, you have to learn a lot of this shit for yourself. If you want to be good, then there's a lot of people out there who can show you, to be, show you how to be good. But if you want to be great, being great is, going to have, is something that comes from within. It's something that you have to build upon over years and years and years. And you can't listen to other people. Somebody's going to say to the big guy here in the red hat, who I see squatting 700, I think both of you guys are squat. What do you guys squat? Yeah, I see you guys moving these big fucking weights, right? So, so, somebody's going to say, hey, uh, well, you, you should be doing uh, five to five. Or now these guys are strong enough to be like, fuck off. <laughs> I'm not doing, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing uh, one rep every half an hour. I'm going to sit on the bench. I'm going to eat a sandwich in between my sets, and that's how I'm going to get stronger. But the important thing there is that they're, they're confident enough to do their work and not to follow the path of others and to be worried about what this guy's doing and what that guy's doing. Um, if you guys aren't doing the work, if you're not putting in the time, then you're consistently, on a consistent basis, on a daily basis, you're lying to yourselves. You come in here, you miss a lift, you look at Bart, you say, what the fuck, man? Barbell Brigade sucks. <laughs> Kick the weight and you fucking walk out, right? Because you, you didn't smash your PR. And now you have nothing to put on Instagram for the day. <laughs> Might as well just shut down your fucking account, right? You go home, you drive home, you get home, you crack open your Ben and Jerry's, you fucking smash that while you're watching uh, Biggest Loser, you're crying. The whole tough mess. It's the whole thing's a mess. But it's, uh, you know, it's important that you guys are here. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. And I'm, uh, I'm really excited to, to see what you guys uh, want to get out of this seminar. Um, because I'm doing one tomorrow as well. Uh, this one was more for, for the team. Um, and I, what, I like, what I like what I'm seeing is that I'm seeing more and more of you guys pop up all over the place. I'm seeing more and more of you guys um, posting on the internet and stuff. I just, see, I just see that happening more and more. And what I like about it is it, it's very clear to me that you guys are proud to be lifting here, and you should be, because how many gyms were like this when we were kids? Fucking none. There was nothing like this at all. No, nothing. There was nothing like this at all. And there wasn't anything like this in the entire, you guys should know this, there wasn't one gym like this pretty much in the entire United States, maybe, maybe with the exception of Westside Barbell. There's some of those like old school gyms and there's some old school places that have some powerlifting. But those were places that were intertwined and mingled with commercial gyms. Those places don't count. This place is a special place. You walk in and you don't walk in on, there's no carpet. You don't walk in on a carpet. You're walking in on rubber that you're going to be lifting off of, or you're walking in on turf that you might be running on. How cool is that? Everything in here serves a purpose. There's nothing, there's no bullshit in here. So be, uh, be proud that you're, that you're here. Be proud that you have some, you're surrounded by some great people. In my gym, in super training, uh, we have our fair share of people that will just kind of be off in the corner sort of doing their own thing. Um, if you guys, as leaders in the gym, if you guys see people doing that, start trying to talk to that person. See if you can get something out of them. See if they can start to kind of come around because maybe it might take them a while. But it's important that you guys are involved in each other's workouts. If, if he's standing off in the corner uh, while I'm doing a lift, what am I going to do while he's doing a lift? Right? I'm not going to be yelling at him. I'm not going to be screaming at him. I'm not going to give him the slap in the face that he needs, right, to get to the next weight. So you guys got to be involved in each other's workout and 
It doesn't matter if someone's lifting two plates or seven plates. I realize it gets more exciting and more intense the more weight somebody lifts. But if it's a max for that person, try to get them fired up. See what you can get out of them. The more, the more you're getting from other people, the, more you're gonna, the better off you're going to be. Super training was started in 2006 for completely 100% selfish reasons. I wanted to be the best lifter in the area and I started to build a team around me because I knew I couldn't do it by myself. I started to get people around me that I thought were good. I started yelling and screaming at those people, making sure they were yelling and screaming back at me. And the gym started to grow from there. We all started to get better. But if you're hanging around a bunch of losers, then, that's, then you're gonna have a really hard time uh, getting better. So what I would like to go over today, uh, but we can go over anything that you want and uh, we can even do a Q&A before we start, so that way you guys don't uh, cool down and all that stuff. Um, I'd like to go over some uh, deadlifts and some squats. Um, obviously, if somebody wants to do a bench press or something, we can, we can sneak some time in for that. It's not a big deal. Um, is that cool with you guys? Um, it's a pretty big group, and uh, normally what I would do is I'd run everybody through uh, some form checks and stuff like that, but uh, I've seen some of you already in here lifting, and a lot of you guys already look like you know what you're doing. So we will actually just, what we'll do is we'll just get into a workout and uh, I'll kind of look at you from there. Um, but before we do any of that, do you guys have any questions? Or is there, uh, is there anything you want to tell me that I'm an idiot? Or you want to tell me I'm an asshole? Or you want to tell me that I'm cool? All the above, check. Um, so a lot of us are competing. Half natty, love it. Half natty, yeah. <laughs> a lot of us are competing uh, next weekend and um, I was just uh, gonna ask you, what do you, what do you, what is like mine, what, what do you guys do typically uh, like that week right. of the meet, the week of the actual meet? Uh, first of all, um, those of you that are competing, um, keep in mind uh, the advice that I give you today, if I really make a big change on you, uh, please do not go and use that change in the contest. Uh, these are things that are, uh, they're gonna have to be worked out over a period of time. You're gonna have to take your time uh, with some of the changes, but uh, you know, powerlifting is a great sport. It's an awesome sport, and uh, the reason why I love it so much are, are because of times like that. You do all this hard training, and then you get to just chill for an entire week. Um, a lot of us have done uh, absolutely nothing going into meets. I've uh, taken as long as like two weeks off going into a contest and been totally fine. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of an individual thing if you're a newer lifter. Uh, three to five days might be a little bit more comfortable to you because you're just going to be so like anxious and shit that you're not going to be able to stop yourself from going to the gym. Um, if you're more advanced and you're strong and you're confident and you feel good about the things that you're going to do on the platform, then don't worry about it. Uh, you, you know, don't be lazy, uh, but you have an entire week, seven days, eight days, maybe even ten days to recover. For you guys, some of the bigger guys, some of these guys that are deadlifting and squatting a little bit heavier weights, um, I would say 14 days for deadlift and uh, maybe at least 10 for a squat. Give, your, give yourself a lot of time to recover. It's not that you can't squat or deadlift any further beyond that point, you can, um, but it would just have to be really light, uh, super, super light. Maybe just like for someone who squats 700, maybe they're just moving around two or three plates, 50%, maybe even less than that, just for, for most of you. Um, so that's, that's usually what we do, but uh, you know, on my way to, uh, I think it was one of my first powerlifting meets, uh, I was all worried about like my diet. Uh, you know, I didn't know what the fuck's going on. I, know, I didn't know anything. I knew a little bit from my brothers, but even, even some of the dietary information, especially for powerlifting, there was obviously the always bodybuilding information, but powerlifting, I didn't know what I was doing. So I remember like two weeks before the contest, I'm trying to like, prepare for this contest and I'm trying to eat more protein and trying to do all these different things. I'm all, all excited, thinking I'm doing everything right. I hop in the car with my brother and this guy named Rob Constance who was probably about 285 or 290. Big jack motherfucker, huge arms. And uh, you know, at, at the age that I was at, 15 or so, I, I just remember like just thinking he was just massive. Like he's the biggest, baddest dude on the planet, you know? And he's like, all right, it's gonna be a long drive. It's gonna be about 45 minutes, so. We got to have some food with us. Whips out a big ass thing of sticky buns. <laughs> I was like, this is powerlifting. This is fucking awesome. You get to kind of eat what you want. You get to rest a lot. This, is, this sounds pretty cool to me. So I was hooked from that day pretty much because of the sticky buns. <laughs> Must have been the gluten. The gluten was free that day. 
Any other questions? Mark, how do you work through the pain since I know your hip would hurt you and you, you have a competition coming up? How do you train and then have that uh, you know, pain that you're going through or injury that you're trying to work through? Um, when you have an injury, um, it, you know, the, pro the problem with an, with an injury is that it's, um, it runs so much deeper than where you're actually hurt. There's like, there's a conversation about sleep. There's a conversation about hydration. There's a conversation about what job you have, what you're doing with yourself all day. Um, so a lot of times we're asking ourselves to do something really demanding. Powerlifting is a tough sport. Um, if you're at a desk all day doing this stuff, if you're doing manual labor and you're carrying a lot of stuff or whatever it is you're doing, and then you're coming in here and you're trying to ask yourself to deadlift 400 pounds for the day, and you're kind of walking in like this because you just kind of beat the hell from the day, it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. So the best thing to do with injuries is to just not get them, is to try to avoid them as much as you possibly can. You like that advice? Thank you very much. Don't get, don't, don't get hurt. Be careful out there. But seriously, uh, you have to um, be ahead of the game all the time. You have to make sure that you're getting your rest. You have to make sure your nutrition is at least somewhat on point. It's powerlifting, so it doesn't matter a ton. Um, but you have to kind of uh, take care of those things before they unravel. If you have an injury and you're trying to go into a competition, uh, the only real thing that you can do is wrap that thing up and just kind of hope for the best. You know, if you have an area that you can wrap, like an elbow, or you said it was your hip, uh, maybe you can um, you know, use the hip circle a lot, try to get some blood flow to the area. There's some really good uh, products out there. There's a thing called the Mark Pro. It's expensive, um, but uh, you know, it's an electrical impulse type deal. It'll get a lot of blood to the area. It helps a ton with pain, um, even just like icing. Um, anything that you can do to help make it feel better. Uh, mobility work would be huge. A lot of the guys in here I saw doing some mobility work. Uh, anything you can do to kind of, um, you know, get, get some of the pain out of that area. Um, I've gone into many competitions injured, um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate side of the sport. You always have to be careful with it and kind of figure out the uh, risk to reward. Um, but the other thing about an injury is to try to figure out where the hell it came from. I had a guy in here earlier uh, who had a lot of elbow pain, and then I went to move his shoulder to see his shoulder rotation and went, I was like, all right, well, it's not your elbow, it's your shoulder. Your shoulder's a piece of shit, and you need to get better mobility through your shoulder. He's right there. He's right there hiding. So if you guys don't see him doing his shoulder shit, you can tell him, <laughs> tell him he's fucking weak. <laughs> but yeah, you got to try to take care of these things before they, uh, before they turn into something. And, and the best way to do it is just always stay, always try to stay out in front of everything. Uh, mobilitywad.com is a good resource um, to, uh, to, to help with mobility. Um, and again, just, just trying to train things from many different angles. It's pretty cool coming in here seeing that BART has the, uh, the cable crossover deal over there because uh, that's a station that'll allow you to build muscle to the station that'll allow you to hit things from a lot of different angles. Um, so make sure you're, you're hitting stuff from different angles. If you're just doing the power lifts, if you're just benching, squatting, deadlifting, everything's going to get wound real tight and you're not going to really build up a lot of the smaller muscles that are necessary to keep everything healthy for a long time. Um, if you look, you know, using Stan Efferding as an example, former bodybuilder turned powerlifter, uh, former world record, well, still holds a few world records, all-time world records. Um, Stan, you know, Stan was able to con convert to uh, powerlifting so easily because he had that background in bodybuilding where he's just hitting every muscle from every different angle. So his muscles were, I remember when he was doing a deadlift in our gym and he was deadlifting 750 for a few reps and his like, you know, his arms were kind of bent and there's a couple guys in our gym and they're like, man, he's going to blow out his bicep. I was like, he's going to blow out those biceps. I'm like, I don't think so. I'm like, I think the rhino can curl that shit if he feels like it. <laughs> so, you know, trying to, uh, there, there's not like a leg press type thing in here or anything like that, but even doing a lot of body weight squats. Um, and uh, again, the hip circle, my own product, of course. Um, anything you can think of, kettlebell swings would be really good. Um, but a ton of body weight squats would help a lot to help try to get blood into the area, help loosen up your groin a little bit. Yeah, sled work would be really good. Yep, hitting up the, hitting up the sled, that's easy to do. Anybody else have a, any questions? What's the best way to do a pull? 
Best way to do. That's an awesome question. I don't know how to do one either. <laughs> um, the, I, the, you know what I've seen people do is um, is use the use the band. Um, they you've, have you seen that before? Yeah, people get a little bit of assistance upward. Um, I, there's a bunch of different techniques that people do. Uh, people will jump up and, and, and get themselves up as high as they can, and then they'll do a negative. You know, all things like that. Even hanging off the bar. Um, is, is hanging off the bar difficult for you at all? Yeah, it really Yeah, so you even just have to get, rid of, get used to that. You have to just hang off the bar for 30 seconds, you know? Um, but yeah, having somebody give you a little bit of a boost, the old school, just kind of crisscross your feet, have somebody give you a boost and then you control it on the way down. Um, anything like that, push-ups and uh, pull-ups and stuff like that, they're, they're, they're kind of a learned exercise. I mean, obviously you do need to get stronger to get better at it, but once, once you're able to do one, you're going to be able to do a few of them most likely because your body, your whole body will be on board with, with, with doing the exercise. So I'd say like the reverse band one where it's assisting you up, having somebody help you do it. Also some negatives would be a good way to, to help you do it. And then just um, even, uh, you know, lat pull downs to a certain extent and uh, dumbbell rows, stuff like that. Any other questions? We're all good. Anybody wondering why my nipples are so hard? <laughs> it's because I'm excited to be here.